The O2 sensor heater is in charge of keeping the oxygen sensor at proper operating temperature. This is usually in excess of 600 degrees. The two white wires are labeled heater plus and minus and they tend to be either white or black. The black wire is the O2 sensor signal circuit and should not be confused with the O2 sensor ground. The gray wire is the actual O2 sensor ground. This ground is regulated and provided by the ECM. One side of the O2 sensor circuit can be activated directly by the ECM, as we see on this diagram, or it could also be triggered through a relay. The ECM may also trigger or turn on the O2 sensor heater circuit either positively or negatively, depending on the manufacturer. The O2 sensor circuit can also be pulse triggered or simply left at a steady on state. Always make sure and study the particular system that you are working on. In some cases the ECM may completely turn the O2 sensor circuit off in the event of an impending O2 sensor heater circuit problem. The first step in any O2 sensor heater test procedure is to scan the ECM for any O2 sensor heater codes. This is usually the first indication that you'll ever have of an O2 sensor heater problem. Start by identifying the O2 sensor wires. The two white or black O2 sensor wires normally belong to the heater circuit. The other two wires are the oxygen sensor signal and ground circuit wires. You should always consult a wiring diagram for O2 sensor wiring identification. The only two pieces of equipment that you'll ever need during an O2 sensor heater test are the test light and the digital multimeter. To avoid going on the wrong diagnostic path, make sure that your test light is fully operational. Step number two is to verify for proper O2 sensor heater power feed. In our test vehicle, the power feed comes from the fuse box and not the ECM. The test light should immediately light up and verify proper O2 sensor heater power feed. Any important step in O2 sensor heater testing is to find out if the ECM provides the power or a ground. Depending on the circuit design, this may be done via a relay or through the actual computer. Since both O2 sensor heater circuit wires are of the same color, any one of them could be the power feed wire, so test both of these wires respectively. Step 3. Proceed to test the O2 sensor heater ground wire. Change the digital multimeter lead from chassis or battery ground to battery positive. In our test vehicle, this ground is provided by the ECM. This O2 sensor heater line could also be energized by a relay on early model vehicles. Any important factor to remember during all O2 sensor heater tests is to erase any impending codes. These impending codes may prevent the ECM from turning the circuit on and sending you in the wrong diagnostic path thinking that there is a problem with the actual wiring. The ECM does this to simply protect itself against any short circuit present. If this code is not erased, the O2 sensor heater circuit will always be inactive and you may also suspect a faulty ECM, which is really not the case.
after the O2 sensor heater coats have been erased, turn the engine on, and allow the ECM to turn the O2 heater circuit on. In most modern systems, the ECM may not activate the O2 sensor heater circuit if the engine is off. A non-operational heater circuit points to a faulty ECM. Just make sure that all the previous conditions are met before you actually condemn the ECM. The last step in O2 sensor heater testing is to perform an actual heater continuity test. Start by disconnecting the O2 sensor connector and connecting the digital multimeter across the two O2 sensor heater wires. Before that, touch the two multimeter leads to verify that the meter is actually working. Then, take an actual resistance reading of the O2 sensor heater. A good O2 sensor heater should have between 50 and 90 ohms. When reading an O2 sensor signal cycle, a complete cycle is the time it takes the signal path to cross the same point on the oscilloscope or graphing multimeter screen, as in these two points marked by the arrows. By measuring the time it takes for the signal to cross these two points and dividing one by the time, the frequency of the O2 sensor can be deduced. Just remember that any two same points along the signal path will work just fine. A desired feature of a digital multimeter or oscilloscope are the measuring cursors. By simply placing the O2 sensor signal between these two cursors the exact cycle time can be measured. This waveform capture and measurement principle can also be used to test many automotive sensors and actuators. A simple 4-wire O2 sensor is composed of the heater plus and minus the O2 sensor ground and the O2 sensor signal. The O2 sensor may be grounded at its body or by a ground provided by the ECM. A loss of the O2 sensor ground provided by the ECM will also render the O2 sensor useless. Always check for proper O2 sensor ground at the ECM ground circuit wire or at the dedicated ground splice, usually bolted to the engine block. Step 1 in electric low 2 sensor testing is to connect wire tap to the O2 sensor signal wire, which is where all O2 sensor testing will be performed. Then connect the digital multimeter black lead to a suitable chassis ground or two battery negative. Do not mistake the O2 sensor ground wire for the signal wire. The ground wire is usually gray, and the signal wire is normally black. Set your multimeter or oscilloscope for a maximum range of 1 volts. Remember, all O2 sensors generate a voltage between 0 and 1 volts. This of course is the theoretical range. In order for the ECM to be in full control of the mixture, the O2 sensor should always be cycling. If the O2 sensor is not cycling then the ECM is in open loop and therefore not in control of the air-fuel mixture. In our test vehicle, the ECM is not in air-fuel control due to an impending O2 sensor heater code. Erase all O2 sensor related codes before testing the O2 sensor response. Then, goose the throttle and test the O2 sensor lean and rich response respectively. The O2 sensors should reach at least 150 millivolts on the lean side and 800 millivolts on the rich side.
Since this vehicle had an O2 sensor heater fault, the O2 was replaced, and the memory was erased. After the memory was erased, the system immediately went into closed loop, indicating that the ECM was in full air fuel control. Step number 3, verify for proper O2 sensor cycling frequency. A minimum of 1 Hz or 1 cycle per second is needed. In this step, simply freeze the waveform and use the cursors to measure the time it takes for the O2 sensor signal to complete 1 cycle. Then divide 1 by this time period to get the frequency. By using this method, the need for a complicated O2 sensor response test is avoided, making for a fast testing procedure. In this waveform close-up, we can see the cursors being placed to measure a complete O2 sensor cycle. Remember, you can always place the cursors on any two same points in the waveform, including the upper or lower crests. In this example, we can see the two cursors intersecting two same points along the waveform. In this case, the two positive O2 sensor cycle humps, or crests. In the lower right on the screen, we can see that the O2 sensor took 0.55 seconds to complete one cycle. This is well below the one second time limit. By simply dividing one by the time, in this case 0.55 seconds, a frequency of 1.8 Hz is deduced. This is well within proper range. Remember. A frequency equals or faster than 1 Hz is needed for the ACM not to flag the O2 sensor as faulty. Following is the same procedure but with a faster sweep time. By raising the sweep time, we can capture the O2 sensor signal in better detail. Remember, the O2 sensor response test simply entails an analysis of the O2 sensor frequency and amplitude. This is exactly the same criteria that the ECM uses to test the O2 sensor.